Welcome to the Pit Stop Ranch, where from time to time we like to change gears. Today, we're going to be building a stand, a pedestal, to fit this B&M uh, shifter. Um, this will allow us to uh, shift to the transmission uh, and um, operate the vehicle as you would expect it to be. Now obviously um, its uh, location is real important for ergonomics but also everything's got to clear and work underneath the um, trans tunnel that we uh, built up last time. So we're gonna be working on that. Um, there's uh it's cable operated so we're gonna have to bring the cable up in here and 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 do everything um so show you how i built this and um enjoy the first thing we did was locate where we wanted the shifter where we felt it would have the greatest um, usefulness uh, the most ergonomics be able to reach it without you know having to lean too far one way or the other etc etc once we did that uh, i went inscribed on the trans cover where that was and then laid out some measuring tools to go ahead and uh, sketch up what I was had in mind and to take some critical measurements. Once I had the critical measurements, I went ahead and took some cardstock and made a full size model of the uh, of what I had in mind. Um, it's a relatively simple, you know, boxy design, utilitarian design, um, and uh, for uh, keeping it simple so that we could roll through and get it done. Now, I went ahead and made my model uh, three-sided uh, uh, instead of all four sides since one side was going to be a duplicate. Um, that way I minimized uh, any errors on reproduction. Um, this allowed it to be as uh, accurate as I can both sides, theoretically. Then it turned out that way. It turned out pretty nice. Once I was happy with the model, I went ahead and laid out the uh, pieces on a um, piece of 20 gauge steel. Uh, here you can see I spaced it up to get the tabs I wanted for the sides since I didn't include that in the original cardboard. And then I, you see me fold it over and do the opposite side, just a mirror image of, of the uh, the one long side that I already have. Of course, next is to cut it out um, and you know, use uh, the tin shears, uh, tin snips, uh, as you can see. It's a good forearm workout and it is also one of the more precise ways uh, to uh, cut sheet steel like this. Um, I find this way, using these, I, I usually waste a lot less, a lot, I, I save a lot of steel and don't waste as much. Next, of course, then I improvised a uh, brake and went ahead and used a um, number of different tools to bend it over. As you can see, I used a, uh, a wood slapper so I didn't leave a lot of hammer marks and um, laid it over gradually. And once I, it was all folded up, all the corners up, then I went ahead and tacked it together and then went ahead and checked it to make sure it's square and plumb and even. And I ended up doing a lot of uh, tuning on it using uh, hammers and so forth uh, that you can use. Once it was um, 
<clears throat> all plumb and square and I was happy with uh, the overall shape of it I went ahead and finished welding uh, it up using uh, TIG uh, just because it's really easy to use the TIG while in a shop like this where uh, if it's actually on the vehicle I tend to use one. Here I'm punching the holes in, uh, to actually bolt the, um, the shifter down. Um, now what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and put uh, rib inserts or rib nuts in, inserts in, to um, so that uh, they're captured and it's really easy to thread them in and out. And if you don't have one of these or you, you have never used one of these before, it's really nice on relatively low stress areas to uh, saves you from having to try to come up from the bottom with uh, nuts or trying to weld nuts on the backside. Okay, the next step is to go ahead and punch some holes in it for uh, welding it down, uh, plug welding it to the trans cover uh, instead of bolting it down because, you know, I heard somewhere uh, why uh, uh, bolt if you can weld. Alright, now we need to get the cable to come off. I've, I've went ahead and cut it edged out where I'm going to place that. Here's the shifter cable. Oh, it's glory. Next step is to figure out <coughs> where I want the cable to come through the trans cover. Um, so I uh, checked uh, where it lines up on the shifter. It was nominally off center. Figured out approximately where uh, a good place to put the hole is, and then when blew the hole into it. Now. Uh, uh, I think I measured slightly under a half inch for the uh, largest part of the cable that needed to pass through the hole, so I took it all the way out to a half inch. Here I'm using a half inch um, uh, drill bit <coughs> shank to go ahead and then uh, twist the metal around the hole around so that it is in line with uh, the, uh, in line with the um, uh, uh, shifter. Uh, attachment or the, so the cable comes in a nice relatively straight it doesn't have to make any sort of tight U bend or, or 90 degree turn um, once I uh, did that then it needed a little cleanup so that it still sat flash flush and there you go a nice uh, relatively uh, straightened out uh, uh, bulge there so for putting the uh, cable through next I go ahead and weld the shift mount down to the trans cover uh, and go well, uh, fill in the holes that I drilled in it so that it creates a nice strong weld. It sort of simulates a, um, a uh, pinch weld, but it's a heck of a lot stronger because uh, you actually get a lot more surface area uh, of weld. So it's considerably stronger than just a pinch weld, though it, it, it's, it's a it's simple way of um, simulating a pinch weld. Now, I go ahead and go through assembly. Um, fit the cable up to the hole I created. Fits in real nice, slips right on through. There's a lot of cable. Um, it was uh, this kit, this B&M kit that uh, came with Jimmy. Uh, and this whole setup came with Jimmy. We're just trying to use the parts that came with him so that we don't uh, um, have to spend any more money than we absolutely have to. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it works pretty good. It, it's it's pretty low tech, honestly. I think this is a shifter kit from a long time ago. Um, it's not ratcheting. It's nothing. It's just a pretty basic uh, shift selector. Uh, but it's only a TH350, and that's kind of a universal at one point uh, automatic transmission. Of the
and there it is. All bolted up, hooked up to the transmission, doing shifter-like activities. Um, turned out really good. Uh, it's nice and sturdy. I had to cut this back pretty far in order to fit the um, snake it in because I didn't want to punch any more holes in the actual uh, trans cover than absolutely necessary. But um, it looks good. Uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, next step is, or one of the few things, one of the things we're going to be also be doing with this um, is we're going to go ahead and you put a carpet kit in here, and we're going to have to cut out around this and mold it around that and a few other things. That's going to be well after we paint it. But then I'm going to make a um, a uh, uh, vinyl boot to go all over this and hide it up so it just looks like one big long shifter. You know, should be a little nicer looking than um, this is. Um, it's rather utilitarian with which the way I built this. Um, so it um, doesn't have a lot of uh, flash or style. Um, if I had a, um, well, if I thought of it, I could have done something a little flashier, but I went with the simple possible, simplest possible solution so that I can get it done. Um, next time, make it fancier. Uh, so, anyway, hope you enjoyed following along as uh, we did the simple uh, uh, handcraft in our spare time. Um, uh, remember, we are professionals, but not at this. So, go ahead and uh, leave a comment below about how you would have done it a little differently or quite a bit better. And we appreciate uh, um, your input. And, as always, please like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please share with your friends of all the neat and crazy stuff we do. And uh, hit the notification bell so you get uh, notified uh, when our next video gets released. And until then, have a rustastic day.